We're talking today with Al George of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, Al, begin with some background on yourself, and to begin with, where and when were you born? In Muskegon Heights, in, the, uh, in what August, year? August 9th, 1925. Okay, uh, so that's Muskegon Heights, Michigan. Okay. All right. Now, did you grow up there or did you move around? I was there basically until I moved to Grand Rapids in 1954. Okay. So you grew up basically, so you grew up in Muskegon Heights. Right. Uh, what was your family doing for a living when you were a kid? Well, my dad was in the moving business. He was in World War One when he came out. He and another, another fellow started the business and uh, is moving into storage. Okay. Now, was he able to keep that business during the Depression? He kept the business but didn't make money on it. Uh, he had about three people working for him, and uh, we, my uncle, became sheriff in uh, 1946, 36, and uh, when that happened, he had a little store out in the country. We went out and ran the little country store, lived in his house, mm -hmm. and uh, we kept the business, Dad kept the business going, but the family ran the business, the little country store. Okay, so you kind of got by. Now, what, what town was the store in? Just north of Muskegon. Okay. On the M20. All right. Okay, uh, so, so you found different ways of getting by. How many kids were in your family? I had two brothers and a sister. Okay. And where were you in that order? Uh, I was a third. Okay. My uh, older brother, older sister, and a younger brother by 10 years. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now, um, and then uh, how long did you stay in school? Uh, I was in through high school. Okay, so you graduated from high school. I graduated from high school on a Thursday, on a Friday. On Monday, they sent me, you know, my folks were able to send me to Michigan State College uh, to wait to be uh, drafted. Okay. I, I tried to join the uh, Navy uh, yeah, when, during the my stay in high school. Three five of us went to Detroit, to, um, and uh, I couldn't pass it because I was colorblind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went a term and a half at Michigan State until they drafted me, and I I fooled my way. To to get into the Navy because I wanted to be in the Navy. Okay. All right. how, how do you get past a colorblindness test? I uh, was the first one we threw on Saturday morning with our group and I uh, got in the first line of the t uh, test for eyes mm -hmm. and he paid no attention because he was getting the stamp trends and all the stuff out and he said read this line I wrote what I could read, read and bluffed the rest of it and he said stamped it normal. <laughs> I, when I got through they said what do you want Army and Navy or Mar uh, Marines? I said Navy. They sent me to Great Lakes. Okay. I want to back up a little bit. Um, do you remember how you heard about Pearl Harbor? Oh yeah. When I was, when we were in the country and we running the store. It was a Sunday afternoon and uh, we heard it on the radio and I was 16 years old and I said I'm too young to fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right now before that happened yeah. uh, were you paying attention to the news at all? Oh, so, yeah. Okay so you knew there was a war going on in Europe and all oh, that yes. kind of thing? Yes. <clears throat> and, and were you thinking that at some point we were going to get into it or were you? Well I thought some, you know, there was drafting people at that time. Yes. But they had to be 21 or older. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a matter of 
in time. My right. bro brother was in <coughs> Michigan State. He uh, was, I think, uh, a junior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So something was coming, and now it does happen, but then initially um, you're too young. And now were you 17 when you tried to enlist? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you could yeah. do that if your parents let you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but they rejected you, but then the second time when you get drafted, when, once they draft you, they're going to use you someplace. <laughs> uh, and they would have put you in the Army, maybe, if they found out that you were colorblind. But, right. Okay. So you made it to the Navy, you go to Great Lakes, Illinois, for your boot camp. Right. Now, what was the boot camp like? It was uh, great. Actually, I only, only weighed 150 when I went in and I came out at 180. Mm -hmm. I uh, did. I did real well. I liked it, uh, and uh, it, it, was, it was good. Uh, when I was didn't I know what they would do with me because of my color blindness. Mm -hmm. When I came back from leave, it said uh, construction, mm -hmm. and that meant they were going to send me the CBs. Right. Okay. Now, uh, how did you gain so much weight while you were there? Oh, I ate good. I was one of the top uh, runners, and uh, it, just, it just was healthy for me. Okay. So they fed you well, and you got a lot of exercise, yeah. so uh, that work was good. Uh, now, how much emphasis was there on discipline? I felt that the discipline was, was fine. I didn't uh, reject it. Okay. Uh, but were they really careful about all the spit and polish stuff? Uh, uh, well, it kind of made me uh, not like the fact that some guys would not do what they're supposed to be doing, and that bothered me. Now, would they punish all of the men in the unit if some of them didn't well, do their job? We're supposed to sweep the sweep down every night, and uh, they just wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. It bugged me. Okay. <laughs> Things so, like that. Okay. So it wasn't so much that the uh, instructors were punishing you. No. It was just that some of these guys was, weren't doing their job. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, how long did the boot camp last? Uh, I think about a month. I can't remember exactly. Okay. So pretty short. Yeah, it was short. Okay. And then you said, did they give you a leave after that? And yeah. The, okay. And then you come back again to Great yeah. Lakes to get your assignment. Okay. All right. And so they put you in the CBs and the Naval yeah. Construction Battalions. Right. Okay. Uh, now, did they send you for training next? Uh, yes. They asked me what I wanted to of course, I wanted, I liked the uh, water. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, uh, learn how to handle it. Well, be in the, in the uh, boat or portion yeah. of it. Yeah, so be on a ship, and, rather. Yeah. Well, and uh, I learned how to uh, operate a landing craft. Okay. All right. Now, where were you doing your CB training? In uh, Rhode Island. Okay. I think your notes talk about going to Virginia first, or? Yeah. Well, yeah, we did. that's where I came. I went to Virginia, and then they sent me up to uh, Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, and assigned me to the CB uh, unit, C number 65. 64, 54. I think. Yeah, okay. Uh, but did you do any training in Virginia or did you just get processed? Uh, mostly processed. They like to put me in uh, the. Uh, let me cut that out. You want to? That's okay. Yeah. The. Uh, oh. Okay. They, they didn't 
they put it, so you went, you went to Camp Perry, there's a CB center there, yeah. but just then on to Rhode Island, the 64th Battalion. And yeah. so your, your training is really going on in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island. Okay. okay. Uh, and... Oh. What do you call it? When you feed people? Okay, so you're doing KP? KP. I had too much of it. <laughs> And when we left Rhode Island, uh, I told the uh, officer I wanted to be off for a month. He said, how long have you been on it? And I told him, he says, you're not going to be on it all <laughs> from, from here on out. <laughs> okay. That, did you have any idea why you were stuck on KP for so long? It bothered me. Yeah. yeah. But but do you know why you, you were stuck with that? It's because it was easy for them to not have a complainer. Okay. So you would do the job. I do the job. Okay. And so they just had you keep doing yeah. the job. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, when you were training in Rhode Island, yeah. uh, what kinds of things you were learning? You were learning how. To... Uh, I learned uh, seamanship. Uh, and uh, studied it. Okay. Uh, so the, would that involve navigation or? And learn how to handle this, the, the, uh, what do you the call landing it? craft? Landing craft, yeah. Right. Now, were these the little Higgins boats, the small landing craft? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, did you get I, any? I would have had that duty when we left, uh, when the war ended, right. at that time when we were going to go to Japan, mm -hmm. or to, uh, to China. China. Right. Okay. That gets a little bit farther along. Now, aside well, from the uh, learning how to pilot a landing craft, did you yeah. get a, did you get any weapons training? Some, just uh, practicing with small, uh, small arms. Okay. Did you fire machine guns or, or no. just, just rifles and pistols? Just rifle. Okay. Okay. So basic rifle we training. CBs were, uh, didn't have that much. Okay. Uh, now, did you learn to operate any equipment? Uh, no. Okay. So and anything like that maybe comes later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is really pretty basic well, training. Equipment I, I did uh, to operate. At telephone operation. Okay. I learned that at, uh, when we were in uh, Hawaii. Okay, but that's later as well. That's after Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, do you have an idea about how long you were you were in Rhode Island? From the fall. Oh, yeah, about. Two or three months. Okay, so not too long. Uh, did you ever go off the base? Yeah. Where did you go? I went to, prior to uh, New York. Okay. Uh, on the, uh, when I could get away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how would now? Where in Rhode Island were you? Were you at Quonset Point or somewhere else? I think it's Quonset Point. Yeah. It was. It was kind of on the bay? We were right on the bay. Yeah. We used to go swimming. Okay. In the bay. Okay. And you could take a train to New York? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, now, once you finish up at Rhode Island, uh, yeah. where do you go next? I headed for the Pacific. Okay. Now, how did you get from Rhode Island? Train. Okay. So you crossed the country, now did you go all the way to the west coast? All the way to San Francisco. Okay. And what do you remember about that train ride? Oh, all the places that kind of followed the map where we were. And it was a good, nice trip. Okay. Uh, how long did it take? It probably took about three, four days. Okay. All right. Now, would they let you get off the train at different places? Or? Yeah. Not much. We just 
but we stayed on the same train. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, and so, uh, what port did you sail out of? San Francisco. Okay. Boat uh, leave from yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what kind of ship did they put you on? Uh, from there to Hawaii, it was a regular uh, passenger ship. Okay, so like a converted ocean liner with a lot of bunks in it? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, when you left San Francisco, yeah. uh, a lot of times people talk about the waves and rolling seas and people getting seasick. No problem. Okay. Never, uh, never had a problem with it. Okay. seasick. All right. Now, did other people on the ship have trouble? Yeah, okay. yeah. we got pictures of them <laughs> in our picture book. <laughs> okay. Um, now, when you went to Hawaii, did the ship sail by itself, or were you in a convoy? No, it was by itself. Okay. Uh, do you remember if the ship zigzagged at all, or just went straight? We just, it was like taking a... A, a tour. Yeah. Okay. So like a pleasure cruise. Pleasure trip. Okay. Good. All right. Now where did you go to in Hawaii? Uh, to the uh, in Hawaii. Come on. Well, did you go to Pearl Harbor or somewhere else? Pearl Harbor. Okay. All right. Now when you got to Pearl Harbor, could yeah. you see any signs of the attack? Was there still? We were doing some repair work. We spent about three months there, I think, just working on cleaning up and okay. uh, road, road work. All right. Uh, and now, is this... Um... Oh, I wasn't uh, working on that. I was, I got, uh, they, they asked for somebody to run, operate the telephones. Okay. And another fellow and I volunteered we uh, made, uh, worked the whole time we were there. Okay. And is this about the middle of 1944 now that... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, and then were you actually based at Pearl Harbor or... Yeah. Okay. Come on all over Ridge. All right. And so what was it like living in Hawaii? It was uh, great. <clears throat> We had uh, time where we could go swimming, and, and uh, it would, every night we could uh, go see the movie outside. The movie it mm -hmm. might be raining a little bit, but that was all. Okay, and would you go into Honolulu or places off base? We could. Okay, did Boy. you do that very much, or did you just stay on the base? That would, and there was not much uh, uh, tourist at that time. And you probably didn't have a lot of money either. <laughs> no. All right. Because in, in a place like that, I mean, the, the assumption is that this I, I, can, I can get along with twenty dollars a month. Because sometimes you, know, you have stories of people, you know, going into town, getting drunk, and getting in trouble and stuff like that. Did men in your unit do that? I wasn't in, involved with any of them. Yeah. Uh, but were there other guys in your unit who would do that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, but, wasn't, it wasn't bad. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're there for a few months, and then uh, what happens next? Then we were sent to uh, the Pacific, and uh, it took us about 30 days to get there. We had we were, we were all in uh, LSTs. Okay. So, uh, what is it like to be sailing on an LST for a month? It won't see. <laughs> I was uh, in uh, the stern, and. It, Quite rough, and some of us would take a, a cot and put it on main deck underneath the uh, equipment that was there, mm -hmm. and uh, stay overnight. 
Okay. And that would be more in the middle of the ship, so you wouldn't go up yep. and down as much? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, was your whole battalion on one LST, or were you on several of them? There were several of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's right. Did you have it? Well, had all the equipment we needed for the work we were going to do. We were going to build a base, mm -hmm. Navy base. Okay. All right. Yeah, so for that, yeah, I mean, LST is not really that big, especially if it's full of equipment. So you, for a full battalion, you right. need several right. ships. Okay. Uh, we weren't assigned to a ship after we were there. Right. Okay. But you still, you, you spend about a month on an LST in, in transit, basically. Right. All right. Uh, now, did you have any duties during that month? No. Okay. And, and they didn't make up work for you to do? Oh, we played games. <laughs> right. uh, did, did they do a, a ceremony for crossing the international date line or anything like that? Didn't go across the date line. Well, eventually you'd have from Hawaii to the Philippines, you'd cross the date line, just not the equator. Uh, but the date line runs north south. Right. Okay. But they didn't. Oh, the date line. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. I think the equator is the one that the they equator. have the. We're the, we didn't go across that, that stuff for them. Okay. But Dayline, yeah, we you know, okay. kept for track of the time. Okay. Now, um, and so you're heading for the Philippines. Um, and what island did you go to? Uh, the island that we ended up on was. Uh, Tubabal. Okay. It was attached, not attached, but we made a uh, road between the, uh, Samar and Tubabal. Okay. And Samar is a larger island, kind of yeah. in the middle of the Philippines. It's yeah. near. It's near Leyte, which is it's where we land. South end of the uh, uh, Samar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we had to clear the uh, land to make the base there. Mm -hmm. And so, what was there? Uh, a uh, what would you call it? Where you make soap and so forth. Okay, so there was a, a, a soap plant or something like that. Well, Do they have palm trees? Uh, yeah, raised palm trees. Okay, so they make palm oil and make soap out of that. Okay. We took the palm trees all out. Okay, so it had been a plantation of some kind then? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, now, were there any civilians around? Yes. Uh, had a little, uh, on Samar, and the little uh, village. What surprised me was that uh, they all had uh, singer sewing machines. <laughs> and they had stuff that they sold for uh, us to send home. Mm -hmm. Now, were there any on Tubabao or just on Samar? I, I don't think they were on Tubabao. Okay. They used to have uh, natives come over and uh, do your la your, uh, your laundry. Laundry, if you wanted. Okay. All right. Uh, so, how long did it take you, do you think, to clear off the trees to start building? Oh, that went pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, time didn't mean much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I helped uh, building. It. The uh, buildings at the time too. Okay. Um, I helped the carpenters and all the work. I was working with a fellow that was had the uh, uh, the bulldozer. Mm -hmm. I worked with him along quite a long time, okay. clearing the place. Did you learn to operate the bulldozer? 
Did you drive it or not? Did? Not officially. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when he's using the bulldozer, what are you doing? Cutting and fastening up to the downed uh, equipment. Okay. And the trees. Right. Dragging them off the site. All right. Uh, now, once you got the trees out of the way, uh, what kind of base were you building, or what was it going to be used for? Well, the buildings were going to be for Navy uh, personnel. Okay. So just and barracks, or yeah. We we didn't get a chance to use them. We had tents. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we even made a baseball field for them. All right. Uh, now what was the weather like while you were there? Moderate. Just moderate. It was, they kept the uh, mosquitoes sprayed. And the only thing that bothered me was that I might get uh, some disease, but we had no problem. Okay, so you didn't pick up any tropical diseases? No. Okay, now, did they have you taking drugs to prevent yep. malaria? Yeah. Okay. Did you take Adiprin? Was that the... I don't know what exactly, it just... We didn't, it wasn't a big deal. Okay. All right. Uh, now, did it rain a lot, or was it... Mm. No. Okay. But when it did rain, it rained hard, and then it went... It was just to wait for it to get away, and it, it didn't keep up. Okay. All right. Now, were there some of the CBs, were they building harbor facilities or anything like that? Well, or an airstrip? Or? No, no airstrip. Okay. No. But you were mostly just working on the buildings and the facilities for the yep. personnel? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, is that what you were doing when the war ended? Well, yeah, it was all complete. Okay. And so, and then uh, while you were on the Philippines, were you following the news of the war and oh, keeping yeah. track of things? Yeah, we had a little, uh, they had uh, small printed things telling about what was going on. It was a daily thing. We, yeah. kept, we kept up the... Okay. All right, so you could keep track of, uh, yeah. so were you there when Okinawa was going on? Yeah. That, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah. so did you finish building the base uh, yeah. before the war ended? It was about the same time. Okay, okay. Uh, do you remember hearing about the atomic bomb? Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And when that news came out, did you know what that meant, or? Yeah. We were kept up on the news of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, we when were you kept up real well on the news, mm -hmm. it was uh, written up. Okay. Sent. Now, where you were, um, did you ever see anything of the Japanese? No. Okay. So there are no Japanese aircraft going no. by or anything like no. that. Okay. And, th and there weren't any hiding out in the jungle any place? No. Okay. So it was really pretty quiet. No. All right. Uh, now, did you think that was a good thing or...? Well, uh, it was uh, the proper thing, I thought. And, uh, yeah, there was, we were not in any, any danger at all. Mm -hmm. Didn't even see a, a Japanese plane. Okay. All right. So now, get into, into August of 45, the Japanese surrender. Yeah. Uh, what were you planning at that time, or what had been going on before that? Well, we were, we were getting ready, uh, prepared for uh, the landing that we are going to make. Okay. And we figured that they would be, we thought they were bringing the soldiers away from Europe and out and helping us. And, uh, and, and 
I didn't have any qualms about what was going to happen, except that uh, because I had had any reason to worry. All right. Okay. Now, where was your unit supposed to go? Most people were going to go to Japan. To the ball. But you I went were... to Tsing uh, Tao. Oh, okay. Tsing Tao. Right. Okay. So you were going to go to a place that's port in North China. Yeah. Okay. So that was your goal. But in the end, you didn't go there? No. Okay. No, they split us up. They, and we, half of the unit went back to truck. Okay. And uh, the truck was like. Hawaii to the Japanese. Mm -hmm. That was where they had all, all their power, but we bypassed them and uh, they lost all their ability to do anything from there. So uh, when we got there, we saw the Japanese were there mm -hmm. and uh, they looked like they were in good shape. They hadn't been, they were living off the land. <laughs> yeah, and, well now truck, that so they, uh, that's just a, a coral atoll, isn't it? It's just a bunch of little islets around a big yeah. big harbor. All right, now were yeah. there uh, sunken ships or things in the harbor? No, I didn't, we didn't see any okay. ships in the harbor. Okay. Well, some of them were sunk, but they were at the bottom. Oh yeah. So you wouldn't see oh, those, yeah. we attacked it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you got a good look at the Japanese when you got there. In fact, we had some of the Japanese uh, show us around the island. Okay. Took, took us into their uh, defense. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a, uh, there was no unhappiness with the people at all. Okay. And they, I think they were just as happy to get up get ready to go home. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, were you surprised at all by that? Su surprised? Were, yeah, that the Japanese oh, and yeah, like normal yeah. people. It was, well, yeah. It kind of, a, it was a, a good thing to ha be around them and, and uh, the uh, Navy gave us some of the equipment, like Samari swords, uh, uh, pistols, uh, rifles, and uh, we could take them home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now how long did the Japanese stay on the island? Did they leave before Not you did? Not very long. Okay. They got them shipped home. Okay. Now, what was your job on truck? What were you doing? <clears throat> it's about the same thing I was doing in, uh, when we were building the uh, base. Mm -hmm. I had telephone operation, that kind of stuff. Okay. Did the battalion have to do much construction? Well, there were, yeah. We were fixing, fixing the air base. Okay. The uh, airfield was... When we landed on there, we had to uh, pitch our tents on the air base, uh, on the airfield. Mm -hmm. It was a bunch of holes. Was, <clears throat> and uh, so was, they, also, they also started working on clearing it and making a big airplane, airfield, mm -hmm. good airfield. Yeah, that's well. what they were doing when I left. All right. How long do you think you stayed on truck? Well, <clears throat> the war ended until May. Okay. So about ten, nine, ten months, something like that. Kind of a long time. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, how did you spend your time when you were off duty? Uh, one time we had took a try a ride to some of the islands. We met some uh, people who were from G uh, Germany uh, who were uh, missionaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't speak their language, they couldn't speak ours, but we got somebody that could both speak 
Spanish, <laughs> and uh, we visited with them for a while. They, they had some little kids. Had they been there all through the war? Yeah. 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 That's kind of tragic. All right. Uh, but you didn't get to go outside of Truk Atoll. You were just going to the different islets yeah. in, in the area. Now, was there a native population there? Yeah, but I, we didn't see much of it. Yeah. We saw the, they had a big uh, uh, place on the water and it was so smelly that we didn't want to go around there anyhow. <laughs> it was bad. Okay, so they kind of had them all in one compound or yeah. one area yeah, right. at that point. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, now, while you were overseas, uh, did you have much contact with the people back home? No. Okay. Just those people who wanted to sell us stuff. Oh. Well, did, did you write to your parents or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Okay. No problem there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but basically, you're pretty much I just on your own. could take pictures, too. Okay. Didn't have a very good camera, but took some pictures. Well, what kind of camera did you have? Box camera. Okay. All right. and, and could you develop things on the island, or did you have to send the film somewhere yeah. else? Yeah. All right. Um, okay. We had that equipment. Okay. All right. Now, if, if you think back over the time that you spent uh, on Tuvabau and then on Truck, are there any other particular incidents or things that happened that stand out for you? No. Okay. Just happy that the bomb was lit. So we could go home. We figured that we saved our lives. Yeah. It, it saved our lives. Quite possibly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so fine. And basically, you wind up staying until you accumulate enough points to go home. Yeah. Was that how that worked? Yeah. Okay. Now, had most of your battalion left before you did, or were you were there right in the middle of them, or? I don't know. <clears throat> Didn't really keep track. Okay. Uh, but just, so you didn't feel kept, like you were the just, last guy left? We or? just keep track of who was all able to go okay. get enough points. All right. Now, once you get enough points, how do they get you back home? <clears throat> With the ship uh, passenger type. Okay. And then did you, did you have a good voyage back home? I went back to Hawaii. Okay. I flew out of it. I happened to get away. A flight out of there. Okay. Had you ever been on an airplane before? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So you had flown before? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, that, okay. And and then you fly from Hawaii. Where do you land in the, in the continental from U.S.? San Francisco. Okay. All right. Now, do they discharge you there? Yeah. Okay. They don't show home from there. Okay. Because it was a little bit unusual to be flying in those days. Yeah. Mostly you take boats and trains, but you did that. Okay. Uh, now. I didn't fly. I came up by train. Okay. I came home by train. Okay. Well, yeah, one, one, once you got there. The sec uh, to my second uh, time, I did a lot of flying. Right. Okay. Now, when you um, are discharged, one of the things they did is they often asked you if you wanted to be in the reserves. Yes. And they did they ask that of you? Yes. Okay. And what did you answer? I figured I was uh, single and had, if anything happened in four years, I'd be called back in anyhow. I want to make sure I'd go back into the Navy, so mm -hmm. I joined the reserve. Okay. Uh, now, were there any benefits to joining the reserves? Yeah, well, if you're active. I was active. Okay. You get paid a little bit. All right. Uh, I but mean, I, we had two weeks that we would be on a tour. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you still have the, the usual kind of reserve drill stuff. Meetings. And, and right. Meetings and things. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, did you go back to Muskegon or somewhere else? Yeah. Okay. I went back to Muskegon. And then once you got back home, what did you do? <clears throat> I went to work for my dad 
uh, his business, of course, during the war was busy, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody else in the family wanted anything to do with it. So I thought, well, I'll take over and okay. buy it from my dad. So I started buying it from my dad, dad and working it and with uh, moving in storage. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, um, in the next few years, uh, did you get married or anything else like that, or is that? I got, I got married, had one child, and in 1951, when the Korean War came, they called me in right now. Mm -hmm. I had to go within a week. Okay. And here I had a business, and then <laughs> the funny thing is, about three months before that happened, uh, there was a fellow that wanted to buy my business. I had to, uh, there were about four moving companies and the, the other ones weren't doing so well. Mm -hmm. I had most of the local work there mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted to buy it and I said, no, I'm, I'm not selling. And this, when this happened, I said, wow, what can I do? I think I'll call the guy and see if he wants it. He did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going a week. Okay. <clears throat> I had to get a uh, leave, uh, emergency leave to get home to sign papers to finish that up. Okay. So they gave me a couple of days to go home. All right. Now, when they called you up, uh, where did you report to first? Lake, uh, Great Lakes. Okay. And it wasn't from Great Lakes that you went home on emergency leave to sign the papers? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then once you joined them, then um, how long do you think you stayed at Great Lakes? Uh, let's see. Not very long. They sent me right away to... San, to San Francisco. Okay. To put, uh, assign me to a ship. Okay. Now, what ship did they assign you to? Express. Okay. DDE. DDE. Let's see. Five seven seven. Okay. Yeah. And from the information you've got here about the ship, it looks like it was initially commissioned as a destroyer in World War Two, and then redesignated as a destroyer escort in. For, at the time of Korea, when they unmothballed it or whatever, so it's DDE five seven seven when you're yeah. on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now describe the ship for people who don't really know anything about Navy ships. About how big was it? What did it look like? Oh, three hundred feet long. It, it's a small uh, operation, but they work with uh, other ships like. Uh, Carriers for uh, uh, assist, assistance, and uh, we got we trained uh, for weapons and so forth. Okay, uh, so basically, it can be used for as an escort or for scouting. Es escort for that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. what kind of weapons did it carry? When we used to use, we use it. Uh, had what they call that now, it's a, the ones that they would drop uh, for the, so depth charges depth for submarines. Yeah, yeah, for uh, to, uh, submarines. Right. So, and did you carry torpedoes? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. And then just sort of regular cannons and anti-aircraft guns yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So kind of a small, all-purpose navy ship. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now you finally get to be on a ship. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then, what did your ship wind up doing? <coughs> what did I do on the ship? Well, yeah. First of all, what did you do on the ship? Yeah. Yeah. I was both of me at that time. That's why they said put me on a ship, because I was a boatswain mate, and uh, I told him, I, I, I'm colorblind, that didn't make any difference. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was in charge of the folks all, 
part of the ship. Okay. Had a crew of about six or seven. And was this just maintenance or cleaning? Maintenance, or? cleaning, and of course the uh, we had fired. Okay, so your your general quarter is your battle station was with the anti-aircraft gun? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, and then once you went out to sea, where did you go? <clears throat> Hawaii. Okay. Well, after we, we uh, it was a few months before we got to, to Hawaii. Okay. And then they assigned us to working with the aircraft carriers. Okay, and then where did the aircraft, where did you sail then? Sail uh, off, just around Hawaii. Okay, so you didn't actually go to Korea? No. You just not, stayed around Hawaii? Right, yeah. Right. Okay. And getting, uh, right. Then that's when we were assigned to go to a special place where nobody knew we were going. Okay. And that was for the bomb tests. At uh, and then we talk. All right. And what kind of bomb was being tested? The the, the big one. Okay. It's so a hydrogen bomb. Hydrogen so the big bomb. big one. So yeah. Okay. So one of the first tests of a hydrogen bomb. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. what was what was your ship supposed to do during keep, the test? Keep people always from, while we we're getting with their preparations. Okay. So you had to keep make sure that nobody was in the area. All right. So when your ship goes down there and you start patrolling, yeah. uh, did you know what the mission was, or was it just keep me? Yeah, okay. we knew what it was going to be. All right. Yeah. Uh, and now, now, did you have to shoo anybody away, or was it quiet? Uh, out there? We had one ship that they, we had to push them. They, they wouldn't. It was Japanese. They wanted to fish. Okay. We got them out of there. All right. Uh, now, what do you remember about the test itself? What could you see or hear? Well, that we were going to see the actual happen, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> they knew we knew about when it was going to be, mm -hmm. and then when it was ready, we were about 65 miles away from it, mm -hmm. and they had to have uh, black glasses or turn your back or mm -hmm. things until the thing was fired. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it was fired, we, they said, okay, and you can see it. And we went into it. So you went into the mushroom cloud or? Right, to the cloud, right. Okay. We went into it. And uh, we saw where the dead fish and everything, uh, the effect of it. And uh, then we had to clean the ship up. It took us uh, three times to get it all washed off. The uh, water did the job because, it, but uh, it was then after we got that cleaned off, and we had to strip and we had to get cleaned off. Okay, so and this we, is the they checked us with the Geiger counter. Okay. If, before we could eat. So they're trying to clean off all the radiation. Uh, radiation, okay. get rid of the radiation. All right, right. now, yeah. how close to the atoll did you actually sail the ship? Did you actually go into the atoll or just oh, the yeah. areas outside? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we, we were use, using the atoll for a, a place to go for, when we were, when they were getting ready. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, they just ruined the island. Yeah. Or it's just a, the atoll. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, were, were the islands still there? I mean, was there still a. It was only 15 feet above seawater. Okay. If, uh, if it so you've kind of blown the rest of it off? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so the cleaning the hull is cleaning off the radiation, yeah. not the dead fish. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we went back to Hawaii. All right. 
And now, was that really the only substantial mission you had, or did you sail well, other places? <clears throat> the uh, my ship was going to go do. I thought it was going to go right away to at uh, the war, mm -hmm. but uh, I got points enough to get home. Okay. So how long did you think you spent on the destroyer? On, on the what? How long were you on on the Sproston? How long were you on with the, them? Uh, hmm, well, the whole time. Okay. But was it? Well, were you on active duty for a full year or less than that? Um, you got it down there. Well, I'm not seeing it on there. That might be. Well, my whole time was about what year and a half. Okay. That I was on board ship. All right. So, so that's a that was a good amount of time. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, did you write home regularly? And oh yeah. yeah okay. Uh, In fact, I at one time there I had. Uh, leave, uh, ten day leave to go home. Mm -hmm. And were you able to fly home and do that? Yeah. Okay. Flew home and back. All right. Uh, and again, thinking about that that time now on the neighbor, are there anything else that went on in that ship or other things about that tour of duty that stand out for you? Oh, it was. <clears throat> Uh, I had about six or seven guys who were in charge of, and it was kind of fun to have that duty and, mm -hmm. and um, working with them. Okay. Now, were there uh, a lot of senior enlisted on that ship who had been in World War II? Yeah. Okay. There were. were there other guys who had been CBs, or were you the only one? That were in CBs? Yeah. Nobody that I know of. Okay. No. no. All right. Uh, now, when you get back home the second time, yeah. you come back, and now you had sold your business. Yeah. So now what do you do? Well, I had a little bit of money from selling the business, <clears throat> so I started looking for something to do, and I went to different, two different. Uh, companies for a while and I kept in touch with my the moving business. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go in uh, competition there. Right. But my best competitor had and, uh, called me from Grand Rapids and they were wanting somebody to do the kind of work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I went to they, I they hired me, and, and uh, I was with them about 28 years. Okay. Now, were you doing management, or were you driving? Management, oh, yeah, management. Okay. All right. Yeah. And to the point where uh, I ended up buying the business, the moving end of that company, mm -hmm. and right. doing some other work, too. Okay. All right. Now. When you think back over the time that you spent in the Navy, yeah. uh, what do you think you learned from it, or how do you think that affected you? Well, I think it was the way it should have gone, from the way I look back, because uh, the moving business changed a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, the work that I was doing in Grand Rapids was at the right time mm -hmm. because of the uh, work that they had to be done in, in the urban renewal. Mm -hmm. And that, I, one time we had about 40 men working. <clears throat> and, uh, but that came and went. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as like uh, work with uh, IBM and companies like that that I had real good association with. Okay. So you're and moving a lot of business stuff yeah, and stuff. commercial stuff, so not just... Right. 
family. And, yeah. They had a time when they were big, and, and then uh, I got into the business of storing business records, mm -hmm. and that was great. Okay. So I, I, the way things went, I think uh, I couldn't have had a better. All right. I was asking though about how. Uh, what do you think you learned from being in the Navy? Oh, well. Or how did it, did it help you in any way that those experiences? Only the way it turned out, coming and going. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it it helped me that way, and I'm glad I was. Uh, called in because the business that I got into after I came home worked, worked out very well. Mm -hmm. So you may have done better by winding up in Grand Rapids right. than you would have been staying in Muskegon. Than staying in Muskegon. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, and then, you know, when we think about those early atomic tests and, and that sort of stuff, one of the concerns is that uh, we exposed a lot of servicemen to radiation and this kind of thing, and they can have health problems later. Uh, did you have any of that, or no okay. problems? Very good. No problems. I had <clears throat> six children, 19 grandchildren, 32 great grandchildren, and they're all in good health. <laughs> well, very good. Then, all right. Well, I'd just like to close this by thanking you for taking the time to share the story today.